Thank you so much for joining our live today. My name is Zena. I am Z Her Warrior on Instagram. I'm a field education trainer with Wella Professionals. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and thank you to Modern Beauty Supply for hosting us again. We got some cool stuff to show you guys today. We're super excited. So if you have any questions at any point during the live, feel free to drop them in the question card. Don't be shy, we love your questions. I am just going to add Chelsea into the live. All right. Hello. Hello. Good Hi, afternoon. <laughs> can everybody see me? I can see me. That's all that matters, I guess. I can see you perfectly. You look great. Yes. Thank you. You too. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chelsea Mann. I'm a field educator uh, with Wella Professional. Um, and we're super excited to be here. Thank you for Modern for having us again, allowing us to take over your Instagram twice a week. Um, we're pretty excited to be here. We're excited to bring you guys some, uh, some new stuff. What do you think, Z? I'm super stoked about this, actually. I am turned into a huge fan. So yes. I'll let you talk about it first. So when Zena says fan, she means of me, obviously, but... <laughs> of course. Uh, Right, why not? Um, but she also uh, means of the products that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a couple new innovations that we have uh, at Wella and that we're really excited to bring you guys. Uh, some of you I know that are joining us today have already seen these, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to tell you how to use them, where to find information, how we've used them, mistakes that we've made, because that happens too. Um, but we're really excited to bring these to you, to you guys. Hey, Wella Canada West. Um, so again, I'm Chelsea, she's Zena. Please ask us your questions in the question cards. You guys will see them. I always screw this up, but I think they're about there. Look at my Corona manicure, finally. <laughs> it happened. Uh, question cards are about here, I think. Um, so throw them up there, guys. We will answer them as we go. Also, if you're not following Modern Beauty Supplies, please do that. Wella Canada West, and then Zena already uh, told you hers. Mine is Chelsea Wella, which you can see at the bottom of your screen as well. Uh, we're going to put those up at the end, so if you uh, want to do that, don't, uh, don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to talk, the first thing that we're going to talk about today uh, is a brand new product from Wella Professional called Base Breakers. So uh, I want you guys, the first thing I want to say on Base Breakers, uh, before I give it over to Zena here, is I don't want you guys to overthink it. We've had a lot of questions about base breakers. We've had a lot of questions about where they fall in the portfolio and how to use them, all those sorts of things. Uh, so we're going to take you guys through it today. No stress. Don't overthink it. It's exactly what you think it is. Go for it, Z. Well, the cool thing about base breakers is it's literally the most natural product that I've seen. So base breaking is essentially a service that's going to lighten the natural hair in between highlights or a balayage service. So um, Blonder Base Breakers does this really well because it gives us the most natural end results. Yes, there they are. Yay. So it, it really gives you um, a seamless transition between those highlighted pieces and the base. I don't know about the rest of you, but Zena, there we go. You're Sorry. Right. Technical difficulties. <laughs> you were at, we lost you at- Oh, technical transition. difficulties. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to give you that seamless transition between those highlighted bits and that base. Um, and it's really going to give us less contrast and a really bright overall look. Um, I'm super excited about it because I've had the chance to use it a few times now. And I've just been blown away by it because, I mean, I've done base breaks in the past with, with regular permanent colors. And it's never turned out as natural as blonder base breakers. I think Zena and I have gone back and forth over the last uh, week or so, you know, when talking about how, what we wanted to do and how we wanted to talk about base breakers. And both of us, Zena and I are both still working hairdressers, even though we work for Walla full time. 
we both had a lot of anxiety about how is this going to fit into our portfolios? What are we going to do with this? Um, because anybody that knows me knows that all of the dark in my hair is natural. I don't color my own base color. I proudly wear my gray. There's a little piece of it there. Uh, I warmed up my ring light today, so I think it's sort of getting rid of some of it. But, um, you know, b breaking a base isn't something that comes naturally to me. Uh, so I think that this was one of the things that Zena and I talked about was, you know, where is this going to fall in the portfolio and how are we going to use this next to blonde or toners, right? Do you find that, Z, that you're, you're you know, sort of at first a little bit leery of base breakers versus blonde or toners? Totally. I, I think I was a bit confused about what the difference would be. But yeah. now that I've had a chance to really work with base breakers, I can, I can really see the clear difference between the two products. Um, and, and like you were saying, I think a lot of people are super hesitant about breaking bases in general, because yeah. we've seen base breaks go super orangey. And like, honestly, with base breakers, it's been so natural looking. So I think before we can really get in depth talking about what the difference is between blonde or toners and base breakers, we really need to talk about who is our base break client, right? So Zena and I have spent the last little bit using these products on clients. I use them on our collective boss. Uh, and it was, uh, it's been an education. Zena's used it on a few of her clients. I've used it on a few of my clients. I know we have some before and after pictures for you, but I think we need to discuss who is a client that is for, that would be a good candidate for a base break. So if I use myself as an example, I'm the type of client that if I sat down in your chair, I would say to you, and the girl that does my hair can attest to this, I would say to you, I am going to be really upset if you do anything to my natural color. So I would not be a natural candidate for a base break. And, and that's okay. It's okay to identify those clients. And if you were in on my uh, consultation um, live, I did, uh, I think it was last week. Uh, these are some of the things that we would know in consultation. Who is the right candidate for this? If you have a client like me who wants to have a relatively low maintenance look, could base breakers be a good choice for that client? Yes, but in a gentle way, maybe not in a, in a way that we're going to get too crazy and allow it to do too much, which you'll see when we get to our before and afters. Uh, so really make sure that you're going through that consultation and looking at that client through the lens of, of maintenance and sort of what fits with their lifestyle. How are we going to maintain their look, right? Um, so good clients for base breakers are those types of clients that really would want to have a, uh, like Zena said, a more seamless look. They would really want to have a, uh, a nice transition between their highlight and their base color, more of a soft tra transition. We also talk about in base breakers, a sort of a pearlized finish. And I really found that I'm going to show you one of my swatches, sorry Z, earlier than we planned. Um, you can really see on this swatch that sort of pearlized sort of finish that you get on them, um, that it'll give you that nice natural looking um, finish. Okay. So clients that want to have that, I think is a good choice for base breakers, but I really want you guys to understand that when we're using base breakers, they're not for everybody. It's not something that you're going to use on every time you do a highlight or balayage. Some people like me really want to wear their natural color and that's okay too. But somebody who says to you, mm, my natural is a little bit dark. I'd like to have something that's a, you know, a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter for the summer. Great candidates for base breakers. What do you think, Z? Yeah, I could totally agree with that. And it's, it's the type of base break that's because it's so natural, it's not super high maintenance. So yeah. it's, it's really great for the girls who want to feel like that extra bit lighter. And um, the clients that I've been using it on, they like to wear their hair up all the time and they don't want to see any kind of shadow around their hairline. So I find on, uh, those kind of girls, I've been using it really on them because they don't want to see any contrast between like their, their base and their highlight. Well, not any, because they want to see some, but they don't yeah. want to be able to show, but yeah. <laughs> they totally. want it to look much softer. <laughs> well, and I think it's, it's funny that you mentioned that with around the edges. I know, I don't know about you, but I know with a lot of my salon's been open again now for just about just over a month, five weeks, I guess now. And I'm finding that a lot of my clients are coming in finally, and they're going, you know, coronavirus COVID has actually taught me that I really love my roots and I want, you know, to wear them. Maybe they're feeling like you mentioned a couple of times with the contrast that the contrast is too strong but they're liking having a little bit of root. They're liking having that more sort of lived in sort of natural look. 
Uh, so base breakers is a really great option for somebody that maybe instead of doing, they're coming back to the salon, maybe instead of doing a partial or a full head of highlights, maybe you're doing a mini highlight with a base break around the edges, you know, really those, uh, those more curated services for what the clients are telling you that they need, you know, I think is a really great option. Yeah, definitely. I can agree with that. Yeah. So I think we do have some before and afters. Do you want to talk about your clients there, Z? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is one that I first did here and here's her before. So she had quite a lot of root because this was after coronavirus and uh, she's probably sitting at that level six, I would say. And she loves having a base break because she does always wear her hair up and she doesn't like to see that much contrast. So this was her afterwards. So you nice. can see, yeah, you can see that root is really natural in there. It looks like a, it really does replicate natural hair the best in any permanent color I've seen in, in a base break sort of way. Um, the, I used uh, the stroke eight, six, which we'll get into, which is the extra cool. Um, I do find with base breakers, because you are lifting the natural and also toning the pre-lightened pieces at the same time, you really have to take into consideration both canvases. So you really got to take into consideration your natural pigment and your pre-lightened pieces. So I found in this particular instance, I found the 8.6 was a bit strong on those pre-lightened bits. I probably would have gone with something a bit softer, but like it's still, you know, still looks good. So what do you think you could do, Z, if you had felt like when you took this off, it looks fantastic, by the way. You guys all saw my reaction. Zena sent these <laughs> pictures to me. I, it's not the first time I've seen them, but they, when you see them in this arena, it looks, it's quite dramatic. <laughs> Very good. Uh, um, but I think, what would you have done, Z, if you felt like, if you had taken that base breaker off and you felt like it was a little bit, it was a little bit too violet or if it was a little bit too maybe off tone? What would you have done to peel it back? Um, I probably would have just given her like a bit of a clarifying shampoo. I mean, oh, or you could have, yeah, that's probably all I would have done. It wasn't like it was so pigmented where like you can't live with it. It was just slightly too ashy for me. Yeah. Um, and I think like just because just because now I've used it, I'm going to go with something a bit softer because looking at that natural, like looking at that root, I was like, oh my gosh, I need like the most control that I can possibly get. But really, um, I don't think, like, I think I underestimated how natural and how ashy these products really are. Yeah, so I could have went with something a bit softer. I was just, I was just being a bit, uh, like, a bit too nervous, I think. Um, and Nick's asking, did you use pastel or 10 ball? So I used 10 volume on her. Maybe I could have gone with pastel so there's a bit less pigment there. Can we see the side by side again, Z? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it gives you a good idea of sort of the amount of lift that you can expect, right? Yeah, I feel yeah. like it got quite a bit lighter compared to what she was and still still staying in that ashy tone there. Totally. I think, too, it's important to, to mention that with base breakers, we could, I think your answer is absolutely correct, that if you have something that, like, maybe it processes just a, a slight bit violet or a little bit more opally than you wanted it to, absolutely go in with a with a, a clarifying shampoo will probably sort of smooth it out a little bit on more extreme cases you could go in with our well of color renew which i'm going to talk about in subsequent uh lives so stay tuned to modern beauty supplies for that uh you could go into it with uh color renew um it, just for five minutes mix your color renew with water and should take some of that straight straight back yeah, in this in this instance, it almost looked like one of those girls who is a bit addicted to the purple shampoo, I'd say. So it's going to wash out. <laughs> it wasn't something that was like super pigmented, but it was something where I was like, okay, next time I'm going to change up my formula. Totally. Um, those are the things as hairdressers we just sort of put in there and, and store for the next time, right? <laughs> so Leanne Nicole is asking, was it applied directly to the root? So yeah, I actually applied it all over the hair. Um, and we can get more into the application um, in just a little bit, I think. But yeah, it was applied everywhere, right onto the root. Yeah, stay tuned. We're going to talk more about application as well. One thing I want to point out, though, thank you for your question, Leanne. And, and hey, Leanne's one of my people here at, okay. near Edmonton. So it's good to see you. Um, I um, One of the things I wanted to mention that I was, I made a video earlier. I was talking about base breakers for something else. Um, and I think it's really cool that we sort of optimize the consistency 
of base breakers to be used in a bottle if you wanted to. So if you're somebody who, uh, I don't have a bottle handy right now, but if you're somebody who likes to work with a bottle, which I find the older I get, the more messed up my back gets, the easier it is to use a bottle, which maybe that's just me being a grandma, but whatever. <laughs> Um, I find that if you're somebody that likes to use a bottle, it's nice that it has that consistency that it'll come smoothly through the nozzle. So I got another, I got another before and after for you here. Let's have it. Okay. So here's another one. Oof. So yes. Yeah. So she's sorry. She's pretty... I forget sometimes I'm on camera. I need to control my reactions. <laughs> she's pretty dark and, uh, this is kind of what she looks like before. Yeah. So I was pretty excited to use base breakers because I think this is a bit darker than you typically would go with a base break. Totally. Um, yeah. So that's how that was her base break. And here it is. So wow. even with her being that dark, it's still lifted quite ashy. And um, there we go. So because of my because of my previous clients, I went in with a softer formula. Even though she's so dark, I went in with the Stroke 1-9, which is the cool. And you can see that like it toned the highlights perfectly. It wasn't too ashy. It was super pearlized. pearlized. And uh, that base is super natural and super ashy. Like it really replicates natural hair really well. Yeah, that 8-6 is potent. I, yeah. really <laughs> thought, I really thought I'd need the 8-6, but you really don't. Like it ashes everything right out. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, I, I'm one of those hairdressers and one of those blondes that is very uh, specific about my pigments and the tones that I like. And I'm a go big or go home person. Like I'm going to use that eight, six and, and all that. But the one nine is actually the one that I'm in love with. I'll use the eight, six on my own hair all day, but the one nine is such a beautiful, wearable salon friendly shade. It's, it's one of those shades that's just a winner every time, you know? Yeah. yeah totally. So I think we'll go into a little, I want to show a little bit about swatches just while we're talking about, did you have another before and after Z? Yes. I have one more. The one okay. Let's do did. that first. Go for it. You did this one. Oh, is this D? Yeah. Yay. So this, this picture is going to be like, yeah, there we go. So this is a picture of my, of my, mine and, and Zena's boss, Deanna, who I think is somewhere swimming around here. Um, so this is her hair. Usually outside of the COVID situation, um, usually I do Deanna's hair every six to eight weeks, something like that. We do a full head of highlight. She likes to be blonde. Um, interesting point about Deanna's hair. She does have a finer texture hair. So her, we never struggle to lift her hair. Her hair is very easy going. What you can see in the picture there is probably... Um, I think she foiled her own hair like a month into COVID. So I would say that that's probably six weeks, uh, maybe six or eight weeks of regrowth for her. Plus you can see there that she also att attempted to root shadow her own hair. Um, so that's a little bit of banding that you can kind of see there as well, right? So I think when Zena was actually there when I did this hair and I think our, our intention was to take a look at base breakers and see what it would do in a situation like this where we've got some highlight and we've got some, um, some artificial color that maybe was done in the interim as well. The first rule of hair color is that color doesn't lift color. So we're certainly not expecting base breakers to lift through artificially colored hair. That's not what's happening. But we wanted to see if we could get a little bit of a softening of that root shadow there. Uh, so we did, I did a full head of highlights and then we did the stroke one nine with 10 ball, one part color to one part developer. Go ahead, so you can put it up that after. And you can see here that we certainly got the intended root bump or base break. Um, but we also got to have that uh, smoothing out of that banding that we saw in the previous picture, as well as the obvious like toning stuff that we wanted to see happen okay uh so in the in the comments here we've got how much of the base breaker do you add to the formula that's a great question we're coming next to our pk section we're not adding base breakers to a toning formula okay so that's maybe where we'll start into our uh pk our in-depth pk section is that we're not taking base breakers and adding them into a toner formula. We're using them on their own, okay, with our uh, 10 ball developer or our pastel developer, okay? 
So Z, I'm going to let you go ahead with your in-depth PK section okay. and I'll jump in as I feel I need to. Okay, sure. So we got two shades to base breakers. We have the Stroke 86, which is the extra cool. And that's going to be a um, pearl violet. So this is the really strong um, controlling pigment. It's going to really control that, that yellow and that orange pigment. And then we got the Stroke 19, which is the Ash Sandra. This is more of a softer result. It's still going to control those yellow pigments, but um, like you guys saw, like it's not going to be as potent of, a, of an intense tone. Um, and like Chelsea just said, you can either mix it with 10 volume or pastel. So we're going to mix it one to one with um, 10 volume or one to one with pastel developer. Um, and yeah, you're going to get one level of lift with your base break and it's going to control those tones and tone out the pre lighting pieces at the same time. So when we talk about levels of lift, I just, well, sorry, I'm just going to jump in for a second. When we talk about levels of lift, you guys will see on the, uh, our education resources for base breakers, regardless of whether you're using pastel developer or 10 volume developer, either way, you can expect about a level of lift. Okay. Because the, we all know this, the lift is in the tube, right? Uh, the, the, when we're using the developer, uh, the really the, uh, the choice of your developer should be twofold. Do, will we see maybe a little bit quicker of a lift with a 10 ball? Sure, fine, but it's more relative to the amount of color deposit we wanna see. So if you wanna see a stronger deposit of, uh, of pigmentation, you wanna do it with your 10 ball. If we wanna just see like a nice soft um, deposit of pigmentation, we wanna do it with our pastel. And these, this just shows where what pigments it's going to control at so this is really going to control this is the stroke one nine it's really going to control those yellow pigments um and this is really going to control the yellow orange pigments with the stroke eight six um ideally like as it shows on the uh the left side here like ideally with base breaks we want to stay within levels six to eight but like I showed you guys in that one before picture that girl was probably a solid level five I'd say and it's still Easy. like still she still got a really good base break out of that so you know yeah it was solid i i'll tell you guys we zina and i earlier today decided against uh showing you a few of the swatches uh that we prepared for this uh because i actually took one for the team i told you guys that at the beginning of this that i don't break my own base but we had some struggles with finding wefts that were going to work and things like that. So I decided to foil my own hair. And there's one in, you're not really going to be able to see it, but there was one that went in like over here somewhere that, oh, there's a little bit of it that broke my base here. And I put another one in on the other side um, just to show that the, uh, the lift on them is actually really nice and the result isn't super orangey. So I had a foil that went in over here as well and one in on the other side. Uh, and, you know, I could shake my hair, move my hair around. You won't see any orangey pieces, okay? I did have a little bit of, like, violety sort of over here. That came out when I washed my hair earlier. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but I wanted to say uh, with my swatches here, so these are for, from the 1-9 that Zena has up there. This one, these were both done with 10 ball for 10 minutes, okay? This swatch was a level 7 when I started, okay? So it's a nice like little lift and deposit there, we would use this in the salon. Great. This is the same formula, the stroke one nine with 10 ball for 10 minutes on a white swatch. Okay, so a nice like sort of smoky color, right? People have asked me, can we use this to tone? The answer is sure, but it's the intention of the product is to be used as a base breaker, but can you pull it through or use it to tone if you want to? Absolutely. Now, if you're somebody like me who hears eight six and gets excited because yay, it's going to be no, uh, no warrant, whatever. This is the stroke eight six on a level seven swatch one to one with ten ball. Okay, yep. for ten minutes. This is full processing time on a level seven swatch. So if you have like somebody with hair like mine, maybe a little bit darker, if you leave them on that stroke eight six on full time, right? If the clients ask for violet hair, success. If not, I feel like you got an issue. This is the same formula on a white swatch. 
Okay, so I don't show these to you to scare you. I don't show these to you because it's a bad thing. It's not. I, Zena and I are tasked with telling you guys what these products can do, or, you know, are designed to do, but this is one of the things that it can do, right? So if you have a client who really wants hair this color and they have light enough to do it, something like this is going to have a bit more permanency than a, a semi would, for example. So it's a little bit of like a hair color hack and a beware sort of at the same time. Anything to add there, Z, on the swatches? No, that's not, that was really great. That's very true. I think those swatches just really show the intensity of the 86 because I definitely underestimated it. But I, I, I did underestimate it, but you can see that my client didn't look like overly ridiculous. So don't be too afraid. Just a little bit ridiculous, not overly? Just, just, just a little bit. So we just have a <laughs> I know what you meant. Here, Kelsey. <laughs> What's that? We just have a question here. Yeah, go for it. Um, when should we choose shadow root and when should we base break? That's a great question. And that goes back to what we were talking about before uh, with when to use base breakers, right? So a base break really by definition is going to be a lift, a, a, a slight lift from the client's natural hair, right? Whereas a root shadow is in my brain, is more of an artificial darkening of a root, whether it's in a smudge or a melt or a tap, depending on your definition. Um, so really that's gonna come out in consultation. Like, are you starting with somebody with a dark natural base that maybe wants to have highlights and have an overall lighter look? Then we're gonna go with a base break. Are we starting with somebody who wants to have something a bit more sort of rooty and blended from a darker root? Then we're gonna go into a shadow. Yeah, I think that explains think? it. Yeah, I think that explains it really well. Totally. Exactly. Thank you guys for your questions. Keep them coming. Um, I wanted to talk just quickly, guys, about uh, uh, base breakers versus blonde or toners. Okay. Of course, they're backwards again and upside down. Um, so base breakers versus blonde or toners. This is one of the first things I thought when they br brought blonde or uh, base breakers to me. I was like, you know, these kind of seem the same. They seem very similar. Um, so you guys can see the chart that's sort of up on the screen there. I do find that this, this chart is a little bit wordy. It's a little bit sort of overload. Really guys, fundamentally with, I have found from a usability perspective, I find that base breakers does a lot more, uh, a lot more base breaking than blonde or toners does. Now with blonde or toners, you can mix blonde or toners with 20 ball. That's the big, like the big moment for me, blonde or toners, you can mix them with 20 ball for a very intentional controlled base break that can be on for 30 minutes, right? Um, which is a really great thing for, for sort of timing when we can go back to being able to double book. Um, whereas blonde or uh, base breakers is gonna be a little bit more of, a, of, of an intentional base break sort of every time it's meant for that. Um, I find that when I'm using blonde or toners, I can mix them with pastel and really in most scenarios, very much minimize the base break. Whereas with uh, base breakers, you're still gonna see some lift there. What do you think, Z? Yeah, exactly. And I don't, sorry, I don't know if you already mentioned this, but yeah. intentionally base break um, blonder toners is only gonna take 10 minutes, which is so quick to base break and give a soft tone to that hair. Whereas blonder toners, if you guys want to brace base break, it's going to take 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah. So that's a huge time saver in the salon. I think 10 totally. minutes, 30. We also have a broader range of shades in, um, in blonde or toners, in blonde or toners. We have five shades in the brass kicker in base breakers. We only have the two shades uh, at this time. So that's another sort of consideration. The other big difference is that one is cream and one is liquid blonde or toners is like a liquid gel. Um, if you, just while we're talking about it, if you are, haven't tried blonde or toners, you uh, need to do that like now, like leave the house, go and get some. They are great. Uh, Leanne's asking, can you mix blonde or toners with color and pastel to tone? The answer to that is no. So we don't intermix sort of the families. Blonde or toners are liquid. Um, and so we wouldn't mix those with our color families. Um, yeah, that's sort of your, the, the answer to that is, is, is no on that one. So, uh, any, qu any other questions in the question cards there, Z? Um, no, I, not right now. If anyone has any more questions, we're happy to take them. <laughs> so the, uh, the, one of the last things I wanted to show you guys is the app. So we talk about this a lot on, uh, our lives. 
Um, but if you haven't, if you don't have it yet, I really encourage you guys to download it. The, the cover looks like this. Um, and there's so much information in here. From here, you can go to brands and you can navigate to all the other apps that we have that are all super user friendly. Okay. Um, and then at the bottom there, you've got yours. My ring light is in there. You've got your menu. Up here is knowledge library is this guy. This is going to give you PDF instructional sheets for everything we make. Okay. So you guys are free to reach out to us at any time on Instagram, on Facebook. Some of you have my cell phone number, our email addresses. You guys can reach out to us for those things at any time. But I really, really believe in people being the masters of their own destiny and that the information is out there uh, for you to find and research. And you really do learn well that way. Uh, so I encourage you guys to download the app, get to know it. It's super user friendly. There's lots of content on there. Uh, so I, yeah, I encourage you guys to, to do that. I, you'll uh, usually, because I'm a grandma, we already discovered, uh, we will find me in the tub with a box of wine and the app getting nerdy. What about mean, there's, there's tons of awesome stuff on there. Like this chart is on there. Pretty much everything we showed you guys is on there. We pretty much took everything from the app. So yeah, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> has lots sometimes of sometimes awesome when stuff. I'm teaching face to face, I teach just from the app. So it's, uh, it really is where, and guys, there's no substitute for face to face education. We very much believe that, but it's, uh, in the meantime, when we can't get to you for, you know, many different reasons right now, uh, the app is there for you guys, uh, day and night, 24 hours a day. Okay. Uh, anything else that you wanted to add Z? No, the only other thing I wanted to add is I'm a huge fan of the base breaking. I think I've never really broken bases much before, but I think I'm definitely going to be starting to do this a lot more now. Now I that I thought, I thought I'd see the day. <laughs> I, I know, right? Because, you know, I feel like natural hair is really in right now. And typically base breaks tend to not have that reputation of having natural hair vibes. But now that I've used base breakers a few times, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm really liking it. Me it really too. softens everything up. It's yeah, I'm somebody who I'm a hard nut to crack when it comes to those sorts of things. But it's, uh, it's been an education for me for sure. So uh, I wanted to say again, thank you to Modern Beauty Supplies for having us. Thank you guys all for joining in. There's our Instagram uh, handles there. So please give us a follow. We have lots more content coming up. We're going to keep coming at you guys um, on our Modern Beauty Supply uh, Instagram so that we can continue to bring you guys education. Uh, our schedule is going to switch up a little bit uh, coming up soon, but we will have more details for you guys, but we're not going anywhere. So I hope that you like us because we're about to get more annoying. <laughs> um, I also wanted to say we have we're a very big congratulations to all of our Canadian uh, BEA Beauty Vision Awards semi-finalists. We're getting ready to announce our finalists on Friday. There's lots and lots of time left to vote, guys. So beautyandvisionawards.com. Please get on there and vote for your favorites um, and stay tuned. But big congratulations to our Canadian semifinalists. We're very proud of you. We're cheering for you because now we can do that. We don't have to hide the fact that we're excited for you anymore. Um, so get on there and vote and watch out on Wella Canada West on Friday for our finalist announcement. Uh, and last but not least, guys, like I always say, a very somebody very important to us taught me many years ago that uh, if you don't share your knowledge, it's wasted. You don't own it. We don't own it. So go back to your teens, share the knowledge that you have, uh, and pay forward the gifts that were given to you. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Thank you, Modern Beauty Supply. Thank you, Zena. And we will see you guys. I will see you again on Thursday with uh, Lauren Wild for GHD. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.